B. Come here. What? Just come here. Oh. <laughs> What's up? Happy Halloween. It's your favorite apostates. <laughs> I'm McKay. I'm Jordan. And uh, I don't know if that really needed to be said. I've got but. the works. Let's oh, let's well, good. Boop, 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 boop. I'm a hot dog. You are what you <laughs> eat, right? Um, <laughs> it is a little late talking about uh, Halloween, but when we're recording this right now, it is not late. It is early. It is early. So Halloween hasn't even happened oops, yet. Sorry. So and at this point. It, the Halloween stream is also in the future, so go check that out if you haven't already. Um, I'm sure we will have had a ton of fun with Fundy Fridays, Jen and James, uh, doing our various activities and such. I don't know how it's going to end up, so we will see, uh, but go check that out. I'll link it right here. Why, why don't we just do that? Other than that, we're probably going to be cha making some changes to merch and restocking stickers and things of that nature. So if you are wondering about that, just wait. We will have more information in the future. Um, if you want to wait, do that. Uh, we're going to have more designs and stuff coming up very soon here. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, I'm going to take this uh, top off because it is hot. I will leave the costume on, but whew. what are we going to talk about today, Jordan? Oh, God. Okay, so we did a video on soaking many moons ago. Um, we talked about it when we were first on TikTok, and we talked about it a lot. So soaking is what we're going to talk about yes, today, and among gonna, other things. We're going to tell you what that is, so don't panic. Sorry, everyone. We had to lose the... I had to lose my collar. had to lose the collar. We uh, we are a collar free household, baby. Hey, don't eat that. Hey, hey. Already. Anyway, so we're gonna rehash the soaking situation because maybe you haven't heard about it, and uh, it did seem like it was a long time ago. Plus, I've got some new other different sources to share and things like that. And then we're also going to be talking about a little. Uh, other thing that's been in the news <laughs> lately uh, surrounding a certain strain of lice in a uh, certain underarm region happening at BYU. So that's fun. This is kind of piggybacking off of our last episode, which was now two weeks ago. So we do apologize and uh, in advance for uh, missing our episode last week. Because last week we, or the last episode we were talking about uh, you know, self-care and pleasure and stuff of that nature, and also purity culture. We reacted to some purity culture TikToks and everything like that. So this kind of piggybacks off of that subject, which made it so easy to uh, kind of just segue into this subject now that it is coming up and people are asking questions about it so often. So I thought it would be very fitting to broadcast even more so than I usually do how much of a family disappointment I am so that is why I'm wearing a very <laughs> inappropriate even, by Mormon mic standards is covering. you can't even see my cleavage that I curated specifically yeah. for this video so go check out the the Halloween stream because apologies uh, there will probably be a better shot apologies there's people in our family member that in our family that have said that we have an only fans so I'm just fueling the fire now we don't have an only fans by the way but they seem to think it's funny. Jordan definitely is giving away the 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 cow for free. Another <laughs> ties right into our purity culture <laughs> anthem over here of another episode of shitty things Mormon leaders say to young women to get them to feel bad about themselves and not have sex before marriage. Shall we? Hell yeah, it goes deep this time around, actually, because um, I have a little a little reading material to introduce to everybody that uh, I think we've mentioned it in the past, but I've never had the actual physical copy until recently, so I wanted to uh, share some passages from it and kind of paint a little bit of a picture 
Uh, the picture that is going to be painted is probably not best accompanied by the hot dog suit, but we're going to roll with it <laughs> because if you don't laugh, you'll, you'll cry. cry. So, so bear with us in that. We've already established that uh, the Mormon purity culture is pretty hardcore in a lot of aspects. Uh, last time we talked about the pamphlet for the strength of youth that was recently updated and took out a lot of the more expressly harmful things that used to be written with in it and stuff that we grew up on and previous generations grew up on as well regarding how you're supposed to dress in a very conservative manner and how you're not supposed to um, put your hands in your dark places and things like that. I gotta be careful this time because last time our video got age restricted. So we're we gotta be a little more careful this we're time. We're not trying to get age restricted here because that's that just ruins the fun for everyone. So people are like, oh my God, you guys are like middle aged and you can't say the actual yeah. medical terms for the words. I'm like, that shut the f up. <laughs> that is not what we're doing. That was a big thing in the last one that we did was a lot of people were like, oh my God, you guys are adults and you can't say, this is YouTube. I'm just trying to keep the signal as strong as I possibly can so more people can hear about this because it's just like wild and awful. So. When we use terms like that, just please, please. It's not bear with because us. we're hesitant to say those words. Yes. Like Jesus fucking Christ. You should hear us. We're not anyway. Mormon anymore. We're not Mormon anymore. Don't worry about us. Anyway, enter this. Dun, dun, dun. Crazy book. Um, I say crazy. I wouldn't want to say amazing because that would really just not do it justice for how awful this book is i'm just going to be reading one passage out of it but it is crazy to think that this was in print for so many years let me see the original printing of this sorry for our listeners this is the miracle of forgiveness by ezra or spencer w kimball who was, at the time, I believe he was just an apostle, but later on became the prophet of the Mormon church. And this originally was printed, this is the very first edition uh, in paperback that oh, I found. This ugly ass it, mug, yeah, like right out, as you open it. Check out the, all right, ready, jump scare warning. Pew! <laughs> God. <laughs> Who, what, oh, God. Okay, I don't want to dog on any other authors, but I have never read a book where Seriously. the first full page is the author's entire face. Like, I know. the that full was a, page. A real choice there. Like, that's... Uh, so, the... It was written in 1969. Ooh. This first paperback printing was in 1979. And this book was available at the church bookstore in several different editions up until 2015 when it finally went out of print. Uh, which fucking hallelujah, because this book just is awful uh, and has done irreparable damage to so many people. So nowadays you won't find this and a lot of people are quick to write it off as, oh, this guy, this was just him talking about things that he thought this isn't like revelation from God or anything, but it was sold by the church written by an apostle so i don't understand where the disconnect is this everybody was reading this all throughout those years my brother had a copy i'm almost fucking positive that my parents have probably read it in some way shape or form all if not most of the current leadership definitely has read this or given it to somebody under them to read at some point or another I've been going to local, um, the local church, the Deseret Industries is what it's called. It's the thrift store that's run by the church. Thrift shop. I really hate going. Yes, there is a Mormon thrift shop. Yes. I really hate going and giving money to the church, which is 100% profit because they get these things as donations. And then sell them. Yeah. And buying these books up because I don't think they should be on the shelves anymore. I think they should be given to How much people. do we pay for them, though? Oh, this was a dollar fifty. So it's it's not that much. I go to the liquor store beforehand and make sure I make a contribution. We balance it <laughs> that out. Balances folks. it out. Um, so 
I, I just go and I get the, the copies and then people who want them, who are aware of the damage that they can do and are going to be protecting themselves, I'll let them have copies of it or donate them to the flames <laughs> like our good friend does. But anyway, let's get to this. Um, I'm going to be reading from the, the section titled The Sin Next to Murder. Keep that in mind. And we're going to be talking about sins of a sexual nature. Or, sorry, I'm going to have Jordan read it. There are sins which are so serious that we know of no forgiveness for them. These will be discussed in greater detail in a later chapter. There are also sins which approach the unforgivable ones in seriousness, but seem to come in the category of the forgivable. These are the diabolical crimes of sexual impurity. Be gay, do crimes. That's not in here. In varied form, they run from aberrations involving self-abuse. Ringing the devil's doorbell. <laughs> Sex stimulation and self-pollution to abhorrent and unnatural practices involving others. Whether named or unnamed in scriptures or the spoken word, any sexual act or practice which is unnatural or unauthorized is a sin. Everything's a sin. Touching yourself, touching others, looking at each other, anything, it's a sin. All a sin. Okay, next to murder and seriousness. The enormity of this sin is underlined by numerous scriptures, particularly by Alma's words to his immoral son. Love that he defines his son that way. Know ye not, my son, that these things are an abomination in the sight of the Lord, yea, most abominable above all sins, save it be shedding of innocent blood or denying the Holy Ghost. That's Alma 39, 5 in the Book of Mormon. To a young man seeking help who had allowed himself to indulge heavily in fornication, but was not quite yet repentant. Not yet. I wrote. This jackass, not me. Your sin is the most serious thing you could have done in your youth this side of murder. Your last experience in immorality was far more obnoxious than the first. You had been to the temple and had made solemn vows of chastity before God and holy angels. You made covenant that you would never have such ungodly relations. You had already done it and then did it again with that solemn promise on your lips. Wow. These are not soft words. No. The grievousness of the sin enhances the difficulty of repenting. Just like there are different levels of Mormon heaven, there are also different levels of repentance. Ugh, my big boobs hurt my back. <sighs> You're going to leave that in there. I already know oh, it. Oh, hell yeah. Sometimes offenders reach the point of no return and cannot repent, for the spirit of the Lord will not always strive with man. One sad experience may not totally destroy for repentance is in order, but one experience of fornication can break down the bars, blast and scar a life, and start a soul on a lifetime of regret and anguish. All if you whack it in the shower. Fornication is what they're specifically. Oh, he said fornication. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're sleeping around, if you're doing it with somebody in the shower, nonetheless. if you're doing it, <laughs> this shit is not. A joke. This is not something that the Mormons trifle with at all. This is from a, a I am Mormon not to be apostle. trifled with. Exactly. <laughs> this is what Spencer W. Kimball is saying. I mean, you just you read what he wrote to this random ass person. Who who knows if they were even a real person? But this guy doesn't fuck around when it comes to sexual quote unquote impurity. So when we talk about things like soaking and armpit crabs and things of that nature <laughs> it's foreshadowing it's not something that's taken lightly by mormons in a lot of cases even within those people's same circles i'm sure that it is something that is very very looked down upon and it creates this culture within mormonism and i don't give a shit how much you want to um argue that it's Oh, it's not about, uh, it's not the doctrine that's bad. It's not what the prophets say that's bad. It's the people that end up bad. How the fuck do the people end up bad, especially here in Utah, if it's not for 
what they're being taught in Sunday school, what they're reading in scriptures, what they're being assigned to read by their their bishops when they're repenting. Because this was, by and large, a reading assignment from bishops when you were repenting from sins like that. You said you told them who sins. Spencer W. Kimball is, right? Yes. Okay. So yeah, I'm not just like we're not just pulling out a random book like off the shelf from like a really obscure no. And like, this is author. Like, it's not. So, I go to the thrift store. And usually when I find them, I find five or six copies that have been donated. That's not even talking about the number of copies that are still on people's bookshelves. And these are, these are by and large old copies. Like this one is the first paperback edition from 1979. I've got a bunch of other like hardcover copies from the early 70s and the 60s. So let's read more from this horrifying book, shall we? <laughs> Do we want to? Yeah, let's because this it. is a Halloween episode, and I'm oh, going to scare you with things that are in here. Uh, something I noticed while we were doing this I was like this kind of the cover of the book we showed off real quick. It kind of reminds me of the um, handbook for the recently deceased from <laughs> very vaguely just the typeface a little bit um, from Beetlejuice. It's a cute font. Most youth come into contact early with self care. Many would-be authorities declare that it's natural and acceptable, and frequently young men I interview cite these advocates to justify their practice of it. To this, we must respond that the world's norms in many areas, drinking, smoking, and sex experience generally, to mention only a few, depart increasingly from God's law. Thus, prophets anciently and today condemn self-care. It induces feelings of guilt and shame. It is detrimental to spirituality. It indicates slavery to the flesh, not the mastery of it. Our modern prophet wow. has indicated that no young man should be called on a mission who is not free from this practice. Which has still been held true as of late. What is more, trigger warning, homophobia... It too often leads to grievous sin, even to that sin against nature, homosexuality. For done in private, it evolves often into mutual self-care, practiced with another person of the same sex, and thence into homosexuality. <laughs> you lost me at mutual self-care. How did, how did you make the leap there, my guy? Homosexuality is an ugly sin, repugnant to those who find no temptation in it, as well as to many past offenders who are seeking a way out of its clutches. But Mormons don't hate the gays. Guys, if you love yourself, you're going to be gay. If you touch <laughs> yourself too much, you'll be gay. That is obviously like the, the worst end all be all thing to Spencer W. Kimball is ending up gay, apparently. It's been, it, just reading this little passage that seems to have been some fear of his that he would somehow turn gay at some point in his life. Projection. We're not going to say that everybody who's homophobic is gay because that's not true. Yeah. But he, see, he definitely is afraid that he's going to catch it or something He's definitely like a little fixated. Yeah. That's pretty fucked up. Sin in sex practices tends to have a snowballing effect. As the restraints fall away, Satan incites the carnal man to ever deepening, poor word choice, degeneracy <laughs> in his search for excitement until in many instances he is lost to any former considerations of decency. You would think that we're talking about like grotesque, like ripping each other's body parts off yeah. type behavior. Thus, it is through the ages, perhaps as an extension of homosexual practices, men and women have sunk into seeking something similar with not humans. So with animals. Basically, if you're gay, then you do bestiality, so, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Self care evolves into being gay, which evolves into bestiality. That, that was not the evolutionary flow chart that I was expecting. He also says the law around being gay is less severe now. And so regrettably is the community's attitude to these grave sins. Another evidence of the deterioration of society. Wow. So much has changed. It fucking just. Oh, here's good. It brings me joy to know that he would be turning in his fucking grave at the state of this country right now. 
And even this is not even close to enough. <laughs> no. This liberalizing, oh, in quotations, liberal. process is reflected in the United States by communities of homosexuals in our larger cities who demand acceptance of their deviant beliefs and practices as normal who sponsor demonstrations and draw up petitions to this end, who are formally organized and who even print their own perverted journals. What is this? Your Call own perverted, perverted journal. Self-awareness. Come on. All this is done in the open to the detriment alike of impressionable minds, susceptible urges, and our national decency. There we have it, folks. Get over yourself, my 1979 guy. 1979 when? 1969. 1969, 2022, who? Okay, so this also makes me think of something um, the other day that I thought about. It talks about in here, it is observed that the term lust is not necessarily limited in its connotation to sexual desire. It can imply any fleshly or worldly appetite or urge carried to excess. Satan will eagerly use those other urges which suit his purpose, as well as sexual ones, in an effort to enslave men. So this made me think of the other day and the other insane book that I've talked about on here that we've talked about. Um, what is it? Visions of Glory, which is written by like a really obscure, irrelevant author who is not a church leader. Um, but in that book, in his vision, in his near-death experience, spiritual vision that he had, that he was told by a certain church leader to publish, he said that when he died and like, what's the word? Elevated? Levitated? Arisen. Activated. <laughs> Holy Spirit, activate. Um, God, what's the word? I don't know. When he like came up out of his body and started like, I don't know, like. He projected. Yes. When he. There you go. Yeah. And when he was like flying about doing whatever like weird near death Mormon experience visions do. Uh, he. <laughs> He said that when people watch spicy material on the internet or when people practice self-care, um, the Satan is there or his devil, angel, horny peeps are there and they all watch and like frenzy around you. And like they take in like all the happy chemicals from you practicing self-care. Like, that's literally in the book. Oh, my book. God. I didn't hear about that. It is so graphic that I could not say it in the actual words that it is written. Holy shit. That is extreme. Another some commonly of, read book. Some of these things, man, I it doesn't... It, it makes you wonder just exactly why people are doing whatever they can and rationalizing any way that they possibly fucking can to be able to just satisfy natural human urges because people are saying, this is next to murder. I'm at-ing you, okay? You're what? I'm at-ing you this time. You're adding me? Warning to working wives. A word of warning is in order about wives going out to work. Uh-oh. They leave their husbands each day and work often in the presence of other men. Oh God. Where they are exposed to flirtations. What if I'm gay? Has, see, did you think about that, you little pervert? See the subsequent chapter. They leave their husbands and work in the presence of other men where they are exposed to flirtations, displays of interest and affection, and confidences, all in a situation freed from family concerns and thus inducing the relaxation in which romantic attractions can develop. Of course, it is recognized that some widows and occasionally lives with families at home must work to support their families, but f*** them, Obvious, right? Obviously, times have changed, Spence. Mothers of unmarried children should come home and, where necessary, let standards of living and luxury reduce to a point where the salary of the husband will suffice. The numerous luxuries are far too costly when a marriage and children's welfare are on the scales. Everything I do is wrong. If you it's read this wild. book, you'll find something wrong with you. What else do I f*** up? 
Avoid even the thought. You can't even think about self-care because that's also a sin. So you thought you had it. Get f***ed, mate. Oh, here we go. He, we're going we're gonna to slut shame. You ready? I came prepared in this outfit. <laughs> One of the most inspiring of the Old Testament stories is the experience of our ancestor, ugh, Joseph, a youth who set a great example to young and old. Yeah, great example. He stood tall and stalwart as he resisted his I evil don't think temptress. This is the Joseph, you think it is? He's still gross. <laughs> I stand by my go ahead go vomit ahead. comment. <laughs> Exerting the wiles of a wicked voluptuous woman, displaying this, <laughs> this dude was reading between the fucking lines. I did not know any of that. <laughs> Displaying all her advantages of high station, beauty, and political power, she did everything she could to attract the handsome young leader. When all else failed, she attempted force and intimidation and blackmail, but he stood his ground. He refused to yield to her pleadings, her clothing, or lack of it. Her perfumes, her sexy advances, her pleadings. Dude, I did not expect the word sexy advances. The phrase, All I guess. these bombarded a clean young man willing to suffer any penalty in order to keep his virtue. When all her womanly wiles failed and he attempted to escape from her, she held to his clothes and tore them off his body. With lies of deceit, she reported the incident, reversing the guilt to him. Joseph was thrown into prison to suffer unjustly for the very this crime he resisted to the end. This is spicy. This is spicy. This I'm might as well be hate, it. Baby. This is why we're reading this. Like a little damn smutty. Anyway. So, I mean, this shit is... It's serious. This is serious. And, yeah, and this is what they... Previously, I mean, this is what everybody was talking about. All they sold so many copies of this book. Um, there were so many editions. Like by the time the most recent edition came out, which I couldn't even figure out the date when it was, it they stopped printing or like putting in the the cover what edition it was. Um, so, and I don't think there were any redacting things or anything if all of that, that stayed in that bitch better not have redacted anything seriously so we're gonna keep it f for posterity's sake so everybody knows just how f***ing awful the mormons have had it for basically the past 50 years because holy shit it is it is bad Okay, so all of this is leading up to us talking about soaking, which we mentioned earlier on. Soaking was not something that I was aware of until I had recently graduated high school. And out in Colorado, I worked with primarily non-Mormons. And one day, my friend came up to me and he was like, hey, bro, you want to soak? And I was like, excuse me what and we were really we were pretty tight so i thought i knew what was going on but i i wasn't exactly sure he's like you're mormon right let's soak i had no idea what this guy was talking about and i was like i've never heard of that what is that and he's like oh man are you like not a real mormon it's where you just park it in the garage and leave it to soak it's like a, what did I say in the video last time that everybody lost their minds about? Putting the sword in a sheath. No, it was something with like a crock pot. I said something about. You put the, the chicken cutlets in the crock pot. Ugh, it was like something about like a casserole or something. Oh, God. oh, you put the casserole in the oven? Is that what you said? I don't even know. You know what I'm talking about though, right? Vaguely, I, I remember you saying a casserole. McKay will include the old video in here so you can oh, see it. Well. Just kidding. <laughs> So that is basically you stick it in, let it soak, and then like a casserole. Remove it. Casserole. How are you making casseroles? It's like a casserole. It's like a casserole. It's like uh, you gotta let it soak. It's like marinating the the <laughs> carne asada. You put the sword in the scabbard, and you just you leave it there. You put the banana in the yogurt. The whipped cream. You put the the banana in the fondue. 
cue image of Bethany putting whipped cream in the whipped Dave's cream. mouth. Dave. You put the lime in the coconuts. <laughs> you put the biscuit in the honey sauce and you just, you don't taste it. You don't taste the biscuit. You put the charger in the phone, you know, Char- charge it up. I guess in a way you charge, you're charging up, you know, charging up something, charging up. Anyway, you get the point. It's doing a sexual act with a reduced amount of movement, right? And uh, it was reported to me that this was something that was going on at BYU. Now, I had nothing to confirm that. I'd never heard of it before, and I had friends who were like going to BYU Provo at the time. I would soon end up at BYU-Idaho, and other people would kind of joke about this thing. But largely, I didn't think it was a real thing. I was like, there's no one who would be that fucking stupid. Like, I had images like we were just reading in the book. I'm like, that's a sin next to murder. How do you rationalize that in a way where you can... You know, just stick it in and that's all you do and you can feel like you didn't sin. How could you possibly not have any guilt or anything like that? There's no way that they don't. They just try thinking that they won't and then they immediately regret their decision. Yeah. And we're not saying that people are doing this because they wholeheartedly believe that i think some people can convince themselves because in the end it means nothing it's completely okay there's even a real world term for it it's called i'm gonna bleep this but cock warming i mean no shade to anybody who yeah. enjoys these things it's just byu students are doing it it's the way that they're doing it. As a means to an end instead of doing the thing that they think is going to get exactly. kicked out, basically. So it, it's not like for the enjoyable experience. Yeah, it's a way that they're able to get some sort of relief for the sexual feelings that they may be experiencing. Because, I mean, we kind of ran the gamut. No self-care. You shouldn't be doing that. Self-pollution, quote unquote, leads to being gay and we already know how the uh, LGBTQ plus community is demonized in the Mormon church, despite what they want to say and everything of that nature. So, I mean, this is the next best thing for a lot of people. If they can rationalize it for themselves and they can rationalize it for their partner, then they can at least participate in something where they feel some sort of relief or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure how that would be. <laughs> it seems like it would be more frustrating. Well, just I'm just thinking me. like logistically speaking. Yeah. Like there's a lot of factors here that are concerning. One, generally a lot of Mormons are anti-birth control. And so if you are soaking and you don't have sex ed, which many of them didn't, especially if they lived in Utah, Utah is an abstinence only state. Yep. Um, And that's where at least BYU Provo is here in Utah. And so you don't have the sex ed. Your parents might not have talked to you about it. You're not potentially on birth control because of the negativity and kind of shame and stigma surrounding birth control in the Mormon community. And so you're not on any of those things and you hear about soaking and you want to try it. But like, are you even aware that you could possibly get pregnant even from just doing that? Like STDs. Do they know how to put a condom on properly? Does she think, you know, like there's just so many aspects of soaking that's concerning. And then like the after Because, like, my understanding of soaking is, like, just, like, letting it be there so nothing can happen. And so, like, how do you know you're done? Yeah. Is it uh, until the banana gets soft? Or is it until the the banana erupts whipped cream? I I don't know, honestly. Because I can't imagine that the, the receiving partner is getting anything from this generally not statistically speaking if this is not something you enjoy 
like soaking yeah. is not your if vibe you're a, uh, if you're a novice in these kinds of activities i don't think that you're going to really get much out of this um so yeah then what do you do afterwards like do you just run to the bathroom and apparently commit the other sin commit the <laughs> is this a pregame pregame warm-up tell me that these mormon men who are so sexually repressed that they're doing this would be able to contain themselves yeah during or after honestly it's nah. it's wild nah. and that's where i was i mean all the way up to last year i was a staunch believer that no one fucking does this right i was like there's not a chance that anybody does this even as an ex-mormon recently out of the church i was like this is just something people say to shit on byu and to shit on mormons and whatever and then a fellow tiktoker said that they had engaged in this and uh one thing led to another obviously they went um all the way not that the uh the intention ever really would have changed anything but I, I was like, oh, shit, okay. So this is something that people do because they are so sexually repressed that they're just trying to get anything. And this is the easiest way to be like, yeah, this is something I can do with my partner and I can feel maybe okay about it in the end. And I won't have to tell my bishop. He won't assign me to read uh, the miracle of forgiveness. I won't feel like shit for doing something that is by and large, just normal human activity. So we're going to go give this a shot so we can avoid that because I'd much rather do this, not tell my Bishop and then have our wedding date that we've already had set for uh, a month or so in advance that it's too late to cancel things because people have already made travel plans and everything it just extends so far beyond just the act in, in itself and you have to realize the all of those things that this affects when people are going into this kind of a uh, activity it's in one way or another it's kind of funny because you're like wow these dudes they're just horny and they're looking for anything to help themselves out but at the same time you have to realize these are more or less victims of what Mormon purity culture and just harmful teaching surrounding sexuality has done. And I think they're making baby steps toward remedying that with this new For the Strength of Youth pamphlet. But I mean, this is intergenerational damage that has been done. Like it's going to be a couple decades before that old shit is finally gone because like i said earlier i basically any leader that you have at this given moment has come in contact with that rhetoric and that book so it's going to be a while they're going to be still talking about it they're still going to be counseling their couples who are about to get married to not use fucking hardware or tools or equipment things like that because they Think that's appropriate to tell them see our other video on that if you're yeah. out of the loop my thing though is here like for me if you're soaking like you and your girlfriend or whoever are soaking and you're at byu and you're chill with not like telling your bishop about the soaking piece because for whatever reason you can write it off just go all the damn way because just do it by mormon standards soaking is absolutely not okay so even if you did go to your bishop and we were like we're just parking it he would still be like nope you've broken the law of chastity yeah. Fuck you like let's let's be clear here nobody is saying that this is not sex <laughs> no nobody is saying that the leaders would say that and basically your general population of mormonism would say that so here's me giving you permission to just do it and lie and get married and then do whatever the fuck you want yeah right if you have to lie to some old ugly old balding bag. white men at byu some, then some spencer looking ass then just lie just lie just lie i know that makes me a yeah. terrible role model but just lie like oh my god don't tell anybody about it and just live the way you want to live and go about your life yeah. and fuck any old crusty ass white dude at BYU who tells you otherwise. 
Because don't worry, if they're saying these things right now, give it 50 years apparently, and they'll ease up. Just like all of this is getting swept under the rug. They stop selling it, they stop talking about it, and seven years after it went out of print, they are starting to wheel stuff out that is basically not saying the same thing, almost to the contrary in, in some option, in some instances. So, so do people actually do this? Yes. Yeah, Would the Mormon church likely. support it or think that it's not a violation of the law of chastity? No. no. If they went and told their bishop that they did this, would they get in trouble? Yes. Do they know how any of this works? A lot of them, probably not. Have they ever been tested for STDs? Probably not. Yeah. We're hoping there's, there's no like serial soakers out there that is like uh, convincing women or classmates to participate in soaking and they're just spreading their juices everywhere that would be not good because of the whole std testing circumstance and how that's all demonized within the culture i just want people to think about like just think about your regular like go to college young 20s frat boys or just like your regular men young men who go to college and then realize that those people are the same people who go to BYU. They just say that they love Jesus <laughs> and uh, they wear magic underwear. And so it's not a wonder to me that there's any bizarre behavior going on. It's not a wonder to me that there's underground parties and drinking and all these kinds of things because while Mormons are certainly a breed, um, the type is generally the same. The sexual urges, the hormones, yeah. generally all of those things are the same. So is it reasonable to be like every kid at BYU is soaking? No, probably not. But is it reasonable no. to say that a decent amount might be? For sure. For sure. They're definitely, I mean, it probably happens every single year, honestly. And BYU boys, we call them paintbrushes. Generally, there's a certain white blonde frat boy type that i'm looking at i can say that because i used to be in a sorority don't fucking come for me um the paint brushes yeah our paint brushes and so it's literally the same personality just as obnoxious just as annoying just as after the girls who were violating modesty laws in like very subtle ways yeah. like it's all the same shit they're just repressed more they're, be more they're not like, hey, girl, let me take you out. Let me take you back to my place. They're like, you trying to soak? <laughs> they're just repressed in different ways. So Yeah. So that's all fun. It's all fine and dandy. Having sexual urges is normal. Having okay. sexual ur or not having sexual urges is also normal. Uh, shout out to our aromantic asexual homies shout out um but yeah that's not the only thing that we wanted to mention unfortunately for you unfortunately <laughs> for us um there has been recently in the news uh a tweet well i guess mostly on on twitter but there was a tweet that went viral that says the following i'll throw it up on the screen Shout out at Paymamas that says, there was an outbreak of armpit crabs at BYU. Sit with me for a moment and think about how that happened. Have a good day, y'all. <sighs> now, if you do watch the streams, I believe we mentioned this on the stream. Um... This was something that we brought up a couple months ago. I think it was back in July. Um, and this recently kind of got big because of that tweet. And uh, Rolling Stone reached out to us. <laughs> and they wanted to know more about this. Which was uh, an interesting situation. <laughs> so let's discuss how it all came to be, shall we? So we have to take you back to the scene of the crime, which is this TikTok. So 
So we made that in July. Um, and I don't remember where we had heard it from. Somebody had told us about it. I'm pretty sure. I think we were on stream and somebody had mentioned it. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of you guys, I'm pretty sure, who mentioned it to us. And so then we made a funny TikTok about it because why the f*** not? And then we get contacted by Rolling Stone. So basically what happens is this Twitter user um, confirmed to Rolling Stone that they'd heard the rumor from a TikTok video that circulated in July from an ex-Mormon couple, Jordan and McKay. Yours truly. That's us. So... <laughs> That is how they found out about it. So it's funny because like full circle we go, like we were the like partial origination and continuation yeah. of this thing. God, I am sorry. <laughs> um, and the Rolling Stone article that they interviewed us in, um, they talked to a doctor, human sexuality educator, and they said that catching crabs in the armpit is not impossible. Fun. So they also said that they can also live for a day or two away from human hosts with the potential to spread through bedding or towels. Fun. So that's cool. Interesting. So they asked us about it. We answered some questions. We'll link the yeah, you can article go check it out in the if description. You want to um, it's a lot of stuff that we've already talked about today. Um, and the author was really nice. She was like, you know, is this really a thing? And I'm like, you know, we've talked about this kind of stuff before. And when it comes to BYU sexual stuff, I really have to be like a hundred percent firmly convinced that it's not happening because I'm much more inclined to think yeah. that it is because all of us were like soaking ha ha so funny and still people like reliable people that we've talked to that are honest have told us that they were in fact doing that. And so yeah. is this out of the realm of possibility? Nah, not at all. Not in the slightest. I'm obviously still skeptical uh, because there was also last year talk of jump humping, which I I'm also that still, one I don't believe. Yeah, that's the idea of where you get you, you're soaking, and then you have a third party come and uh, create some artificial movement for you, because it's only a sin if you're the one who's intentionally making the movement, which sounds so fucking far fetched because you got to convince yourself that it's okay, you got to convince your partner it's okay, and then you got to convince some third party who's not going to be there or like be participating in a very close way <laughs> that it's also okay so nah. i was nah. really skeptical uh, on this too but it's not anything that's out of the ordinary like you can convince yourself a lot easier that something is not intercourse when there's no sort of inserting of anything into an orifice it's a lot easier when it's just outer course you can say hey it's not technically sex everyone so let me see that armpit girl <laughs> so in the end we were pretty skeptical when it comes to that um i say seemed, more yes than no at this point i mean I, i'm not ruling it out um, I think it seemed like the the doctor said that it was also plausible, mm -hmm. but not very uh, likely. So I will agree with them on that. Obviously, we're not sex experts in any way. Uh, I think the most expertise that we have is we have a Okay, toddler. let me read what they said. It's possible. It's totally within the realm of possibility to spread crabs that way. Crabs like to live in all the hair except the hair on your head. They can also live for days. And so she said C-H-S-T-D, try not to get age restricted here, um, would be not transmissible that way because people have said that in the past. But crabs is transmissible this mm. way. So yeah, I think that's what that's the word that we used. <laughs> the term that we used in our TikTok was the the clap <laughs> so yeah a nice little armpit 
crab outbreak <laughs> at uh, the good old Brigham Young University. Alleged. I, sentence. I will add. Add that to the list of sentences Bro, I never thought I would You couldn't get a sentence say. like that generated from an AI <laughs> tasked with writing awful headlines about BYU. Like, holy shit. Out of left field. To bring things around to the end, um, sexual urges, if you have them, are natural. And people for centuries have been attempting to control you by limiting access to expressing those urges. And the Mormon church definitely has written a fucking book on how to do that because they exercise control over so many parts of the membership's lives that it's just so damaging and it's awful. And this is like not even scratching the surface on the awful things written in that book by Spencer W. Kimball. Um, also, having uh, an STD like that, it's definitely not something that is fun. We don't find it funny that people are getting STDs or anything, STIs or anything like that. It's not something that you should necessarily be embarrassed about. Just go to the doctor and be responsible about it. Um, otherwise, ethics is sexy. Yeah, ethics is sexy. Let's go. Um, other than that, I mean, just remember things like this are—they're funny. We're not—we're not, we're not going to pretend that they're not. But it's also important to remi- remember that these funny things and things that we say on this channel and everything like that come from harmful things that the Mormon church teaches their memberships and teaches, there's a cost y'all teaches is a really light term indoctrinates into their members is probably more accurate because a lot of people learn this shit from the time that they're really really young they really start going hard on it when you turn 12 but really they're kind of planting the seeds from the time that you're born basically this kind of rhetoric is is out there and it's in the minds of Mormons everywhere. So we hope this was a nice updated video about soaking, a topic everybody always wants to hear about. Yeah, with some comic relief of my... Sprinkle in some armpit crabs and some shame and stigma and repressed feelings and we've got a whole fucking cauldron of chaos going cauldron on. of chaos so perfect for this halloween season sorry we're, we're late on that but we love it we're glad everybody could make it to the end on this one thank you so to end as always if this is something you'd like to hear more about Go search our other videos because I really don't want to talk about this anymore. I hate that it keeps coming up and I have a feeling that it's just always going to come up. So we'll talk about it when it's needed because there's always a new generation of people needing to be educated on this shit. But if this is something that you are like, our style is something you like, hit that subscribe button. We love hit you. Hit that shit. Hit the like button. That helps us as well. Uh, hopefully YouTube doesn't restrict us this time around they better not or i'm gonna be pissed i'm gonna be mad Susan. if you would like to support us in an awesome way you can join our patreon or become a member of this channel you the links to both of those are in the description down below you can get some exclusive content you can get access to uh ad free content and just other ways that you can help us out and say thanks to us we appreciate all our patrons they are really helping us out Especially when we uh, have weeks like last week where everything just hit the fan um, and there's just nothing that we can do to recuperate um, when it comes to our content. But that is uh, an awesome way to support us and we thank all of our patrons and all of our members. They are near and dear to us and we just can't thank you enough. We also have merch, but I'm gonna hold off on that because I said, wait up. Uh, but if you really want to take a look at some of the stuff that we have, a lot of the same stuff will come over to the new store. You can check out the Teespring and our Etsy store and plan for the future. You can follow along with us in our day-to-day lives on our Instagram. And you can see some other stuff from us on TikTok. You can find both of those at Jordan McKay. Some new additions. That's us everywhere. So hashtag new additions. 
You can uh, check out some new additions to our household. If you go over there, you might have seen them depending on how I edit this. So either way, you're going to see them right now. Check it out. Last but not least, we have our awesome Discord community. If you'd like to join there, we have, I mean, it's not only the channel stuff that we talk about over there. We just talk about anything and everything. And it's an awesome community of people that respect one another and are awesome. And we just can't get enough of them. They're super cool. So come join us over there. The link is down in the description below. So once again, thank you to all of you. You are the works. You make me happy. We love you. We love the support. You're beautiful. And you're deserving of all of the sweets that you may have acquired during Halloween and or nursing yourself back to health after a hard night of partying. Thank you, and we will see you next time.